Previously, I showed you this awesome presence sensor from Tuio. Presence sensor is so much better than a motion sensor because presence sensor can easily detect a human even when a person is sitting perfectly still or laying in bed. Let's do a quick example, shall we? Suppose the red squares here and here are the presence sensor in two rooms, room A and B. The green triangle is you, the blue square is your friend. Obviously, the presence sensor in this room has no issue picking you up. The other sensor in room B has no issue picking your friend up as well. It knows that somebody is in room A and somebody is in room B. Sometimes you want finer detail though. Sometimes you want to know who is in room A and who is in room B. Or if multiple people are in room A or multiple people are in room B. This is truly a first world problem, isn't it? How do you know you're in room A? And how do you know if you're not in room B? Luckily, a lot of smart people solve this issue. Enter ES Presence. Luckily for us, setting this up is super easy. All you need is a micro USB cable, the charger, the ESP32 chip. Here you can see where you connect the micro USB cable to to power this thing up. Here's a giant antenna that's connected to the ESP chip. Here's a penny for scale or a micro SD card for scale. Just to let you see how small this chip really is. It's crazy small. And in this project, we don't have to do any soldering whatsoever. It's all just plug and play. So go ahead and plug the micro USB cable into this end right here and plug the other end of the USB into your computer or laptop. We need to load a firmware into that ESP chip. So go ahead and click on connect. When you plug it into your laptop or desktop, you should see something like this. Go down and try to find something like UART Bridge and click on Connect. Click on Install ES Presence. Check Erase Device. And then click on Next. Click on Install. Installation does take a while, maybe about uh, two or three minutes. Click on Next when installation is done. Enter your Wi Fi access point name and enter the password of that Wi Fi network. And then click on Connect. If you're using an Eero mesh network like myself, go ahead and disable 5 GHz because this chip is only 2.4 GHz and then click on connect. For whatever reason, it didn't seem to connect. So eventually I just click on skip. For whatever reason, it refuses to connect to my network. So I just unplug it from the computer and then plug it in directly to the charging plug that you saw earlier. Upon using advanced IP scanner to sniff out the IP address, I found it. When I found on my network, this is the IP address 192.168.1.29 and I log in it immediately. Go ahead and fill in the name of the room that this microchip will be installed. Fill in the MQTT section, the server IP address. The port is default, so just leave it at 1883. Enter your username and password. Click save and then click on restart. Now go to your home assistant, click on settings. Devices and Integrations, go down to MQTT, and then search by the name of the room that you enter. So mine is Basement, for instance. All the way down, you'll see ES Presence Basement. And there you go. This chip is now connected to your MQTT server. I'm not going to go over how to install MQTT on Home Assistant, just because there's so much videos out there already. But I can tell you right now, it's pretty painless within 10 minutes to set up this MQTT server. All right, let's add the first device to track. I always have my watch on, so that's really easy to track where I am in the house. This is the watch I'm using right now, a Maze Fit. This is like about three or four years old and it's still going strong. So assuming if you have a watch or something similar like a phone, go ahead and go into the about section and then you should see something about Bluetooth address. Here you can see my Bluetooth address is all hex, colon, hex, colon, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry about the colon for now, just make a note of all the numbers and letters. Let's jump back into your home assistant again. Click on settings. Go down to devices and services. Go all the way down to your MQTT. Search for device. Once again, it's the basement. And then ES Presence Basement. On the left hand side, click on visit. So we're done with the top section already. We're done with the middle section, which is the MQTT. Scroll a little bit down further, down to scanning. 
So here you can see I already added some of the MAC address of some of my devices. The first one being my watch. I could wait for the chip to scan all the Bluetooth in my houses. That would take forever. So that's why I manually forced it to look for this watch only. Click on save and then scroll all the way back up and click on restart device. Make a note of the IP address and add to the end of it slash UI. On the left hand side, click on fingerprints. And here you will see all of the devices that is being scanned right now in my house. That's a lot of devices. The part that you care really is the ID. And this is the ID that we'll be using in home assistance. You can see the MAC address. You will also see RSSI. The higher the number it is, the closer it is to the ESP chip. So anything above NIC50 is pretty close as you can see. And obviously at one meter away from the chip, the signal will degrade significantly. Now, in order to get this working with Home Assistant, we need to change the configuration file of Home Assistant. Personally, I like to edit with notepads, so that's why I have the SAMBA share working with my Windows machine. I can easily jump to the folder anytime I want to. Here's the configuration file. Double click on it to edit it. In configuration file, if you don't have it already, add it in. This will be sensor colon space exclamation mark include mysensors.yaml. It's going to reference it to another file, which is mysensors.yaml file. I'm going to share this file with you so you can have a nice template to just copy and paste. But basically in mysensors.yaml, it will include all of the MAC addresses. The platform, which is the default, just leave it. The device ID is the device ID that you pull from this website. The name, you can name it whatever you want. The state topic will be this, which is the default and then the device ID. So this line and this line matches. The timeout can be whatever you want as well as a wait timeout. But for me, I'm leaving it at default, which is 10 and 120. Add as many devices as you want to track. And that's basically it. Go ahead and save these two files and restart Home Assistant. For me, I like to use terminal. So click on terminal and then type in HA core restart. It will take about 30 seconds. Once Home Assistant restarted it, click on developers tools. Click on states. Here you can see that my phone is online and is located in the basement because I'm right next to it. Well, I should clarify, I'm not in the basement right now, but the ESP chip will be deployed into the basement. My watch, for some reason, it goes to sleep a lot, so that's why it's not home even though I'm wearing it right now. If you look on the right hand side, it will give you approximate distance. This distance number is absolute garbage, so I wouldn't rely on it. So the only two information that we can really can use is whether the device is not home or it's in a room somewhere. There's about 10 rooms in my house, so I will deploy 10 devices. And if my phone is next to the basement, then Home Assistant will report the phone as being in the basement. How does it know where my phone is in which room? Well, remember with RSSI that you saw earlier, if the RSSI is much higher in the living room, then my phone must be in the living room and no longer in the basement. If I left the house, then I must be not home because none of the devices is picking my phone up. Now you're thinking, whoa, wait a second, this is a freaking privacy nightmare, right? If I can do it, then certainly other people can do it too. Other people can sniff me up and know I'm there. I'm happy to say most modern phones randomize the MAC address. That means at 9 a.m., the phone has a MAC address of AA. At 10 a.m., the phone MAC address will be BB, for instance. Something totally different. So there's no way somebody can just sniff you out and know that you're visiting their place at uh, certain hours of the day, for instance. Obviously, this is a huge problem for you because you want to track yourself in your own house. So if you're using Home Assistant on your Android phone, such as a Samsung like myself, go ahead and open the app up. Go down to Settings. Click on the Companion app. Click on Manage Sensors. Go all the way down to something about Bluetooth. There we go, BLE transmitter. And click on Enable Sensor. Once you've enabled the BLE transmitting, go ahead and go back to the ES Presence website. Try to find something something relating to iBeacon. And there you go, that's the phone. If you want to track it, go ahead and open your sensors up again and enter that device ID which begins with iBeacon. And then the same thing down in State Topic. Now, if you have Apple stuff like iPhones or iPad, it's a little bit different. Go back to the user interface, give it a name. In this instance, it's the iPad Air. Click on Enroll. 
Assuming the iPad Air is next to the chip, and after you click on Enroll, you should immediately see this pop up right here, ES Presence. Click on it, connect to it, pair it, make sure that it's connected to the ESP chip. The enroll process will time out, so if you wait too long, this ES Presence will disappear. Or obviously, if you're not standing near the chip, then you won't even see this ES Presence. Once it's successfully paired with the chip, you'll see it immediately pop up for the device ID, which would be the exact same device ID that you gave it earlier, which is iPad Air. So don't forget to change the device ID as well as the state topic. All right, it was fun making this video. Hopefully you found it useful. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel and thanks for watching.